back to Thursday Bible Study. My name is Cassie Waits, and I'm so glad you are part of our discussion today. Our opening hymn is Seek Ye First. Let's join our voices together. today to welcome Reverend Joe Evans, who will lead us in our study of Luke chapter 14, verses 7 through 14. Good afternoon. I'm, I'm honored to be with you this, this Thursday for Thursday Bible study, and I'm very grateful that Reverend Cassie Waits invited me to, to lead today. Um, Cassie's dynamic leadership during this time um, has really kept a lot of us going, has kept a lot of programs going. While, while some of us on the church staff were, were just anxiously waiting for the day when we'd be able to meet together in person, uh, Cassie has been busy launching studies like this one to make sure that we can all stay connected as this quarantine stretches out. We have a um, counter-cultural parable before us today from the Gospel of Luke. But before I read it, I'd like to tell you a story and then I'd like to pray. How often it is that we, we are upside down in how we, we think about status and social position. I, um, I, I heard a story once about a group of medical students who were, give, who were being given a tour of a hospital from the, from the chair of the surgery department. And the first thing he did was he, he took them into the operating room and he introduced them to a man named Marco who uh, cleaned the operating room. After every, every surgery, Marco cleaned the operating room and so the chief of surgery introduced the class to Marco and said, you know, that this is Marco, he has three kids at home, he has been working here for 25 years. Because of him, we're able to perform surgeries in a sanitary environment. It, I'm very honored that you all get to meet Marco this afternoon. And then they went on with the tour of the hospital. They, they saw everything. They saw the, the other operating rooms. They saw the waiting room. They saw the ER, etc., etc. Then they came back to, the, back to where they started the tour, and the chief of surgery said, I only have one question for you now. Can you tell me, who here can tell me the name of the man who cleans the operating room? And none of the medical students were able to answer the chief of surgery's question. And I think that's because so often we think, um, we think in terms of, uh, we, we are backwards about who we think is important and who we think is insignificant. But during this time of quarantine, it becomes clear how dependent on so many people we truly are. Uh, how dependent we are on the man who, who, collects the, who collects the garbage from the curb. What would we do with a, if that person weren't able to come to work? Who, who would we be? Where would we be if not for the men and women who stock grocery store shelves? And yet, do we know any of their names? Do we acknowledge their significance in our lives? So um, I believe it is very often that we fail to see who we are most dependent on for success in life. But before we read a parable that's about um, maybe, maybe about some of these subjects, let us pray. 
Almighty God, in the ancient words of Scripture, help us to hear some eternal truth. The way we think and the way we live is often all upside down. So help us to listen and help us to change. Amen. Now a scripture lesson from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verses 7 to 14. Listen now for the word of the Lord. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, Give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, um, just as we did last Thursday, we have a parable here with multiple characters. So let's take a moment and think about each of the characters in this parable. At least in the first part of the parable, as uh, Jesus is describing the setting of a wedding banquet, can you imagine how embarrassing it would be to get caught at the table reserved for the bridal party or, or, or someone else? At, at a wedding party there are uh, reserved seats. And also at a wedding party, in this parable about the, the, wedding, the wedding banquet, you can tell that there are at least three characters here. There's, there's you, there's the guest, there's also a host, and theoretically, there's a person of greater standing who might need your seat. When you think about what it's like to be the guest, you're, you're probably thinking as a guest, well, do I have on the right clothes? Do I, am I wearing the right stuff? Do I have on um, a nice enough tuxedo? Did I, bring the right, did I bring the right gift? When you think about the host, you might be thinking about your impression, um, how the host will be impressed or what the host will think about you and what you have on. So, you know, you, you think about like maybe your husband, um, if he knows that the father of the bride is a big Georgia fan, the, the, your husband might wear like UGA socks or, or uh, if you know that the, the mother of the bride wears hats, maybe you'd wear a hat as well. Uh, there are all kinds of ways that you might try to impress your host, but always, uh, or maybe not always, but certainly in the case of this parable, there is the chance that there will be a person of greater standing who might show up later and will need your seat. What I think this parable pushes us to understand is the character or standing of ourselves and the character of our hosts. What the, what the parable pushes us to ask is, is who am I? Do I know who I am? And do I know who my host is and what will impress my host? Uh, so first, who are we and, and what is our standing? Uh, I, I think that's a really hard question to answer because we're, we don't usually know ourselves very well, or if we think we do, then we're probably wrong. Uh, certainly that's been the case for me in my life. Uh, I, um, I remember vividly the one time I made the all-star team in youth baseball. And I was on the, the all-star team. We played at um, Custer Park. I don't know if any of you remember where. Custer Park, 
I think the baseball field's been torn down and it's been replaced with a really nice facility now. But back then it was a baseball field and we played there. And when I made the All-Star team, um, my dad, who had been my coach, was no longer my coach because the All-Star team had like the All-Star coach. And I had never met this person before and he said to me at the first game, uh, as you watch the game progress, if you see a player on the field who you are better than, just let me know and I'll pull that teammate from the game and you can go in and take his place. So I was watching the game, trying to do what the coach told me, but I was never so confident in my ability that I ever said to the coach, hey coach, that guy at shortstop, I'm better than him, take him out and let me go in. And instead I just sat the bench the whole time. Uh, going through life, there, there's been times where I didn't think I was up to a task that I was actually up to, and then there have been other times where I, um, I inflated my self-worth or self-importance and, and had to, had, was asked to, you know, step back, made a mistake or, or overdid it or whatever. Uh, who are we and um, what is our status? Uh, we don't always know who we are. And so we Christians have been told to listen to God, to God who can tell us who we are. So that's why I always end the service the same way. Uh, I think this, uh, I, one, I don't think we know who we are. We're usually wrong about who we are. And two, we have to listen to God who tells us who we are if we are to make it in this world. So every service I end the same way. Remember always who you are, for you are God's own as God's own, and then I, you know, I define some attributes about what you should do as God's own. Because who you are, your identity, requires certain behavior. In God's eyes, we are precious and we are redeemed. That's what we emphasize every time a child is baptized in our church, that this child, in the eyes of Christ, is worth dying for. Indeed, we, we are precious in the eyes of God, so who are we trying to impress by taking a seat at the head of the table or only inviting those who can return the invitation into our homes? What this parable pushes us to realize is that we, we may try to impress people like our neighbors or our relatives or our friends. The problem is that um, other people are pretty hard to impress because as soon as, as we get our boat, our neighbor goes and buys a bigger one. Or as soon as we sod our lawn, our neighbor does the same thing. Or gets a pool installed, does something completely bigger. We, we try to make ourselves feel special by working for admiration or to try and inspire jealousy. question we must ask, led by this parable, is what is going to impress the host? Who is this host? And what is going to impress him or her? Think back to the chief of surgery who only wanted the students to know the name of the man who cleaned the operating room. Is this Jesus and who does Jesus spend his time with? It's listed there in the scripture lesson. The poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and then we, we, we think back on scripture and, and, and can add to that list the, the prostitute, the tax collector, the foreigner. The question for us is, if we know that association with the likes of these impresses Jesus, then who, with our behavior and our associations, are we trying to impress? One final thought is this. Remember who you are, for you are God's own, and as God's own, you should act how you are supposed to act, how God tells you to act. With compassion, kindness, humility, and patience. 
bearing with each other and forgiving each other just as the Lord has forgiven you. But above all else, clothe yourselves with love which binds everything together. The question that this parable makes me ask myself and that I believe this parable, uh, the question that I believe this parable demands that you ask yourself is simply this. Uh, by your behavior, are you living in such a way that's trying to gain the approval of the world or the approval of the one who has conquered all, redeemed us, and shown us how to live? Thank you for being part of Thursday Bible Study. Until next time, may the Lord bless you, be gracious to you, and give you peace.